Yeah, I've worked with David Fulshock on probably, I don't know, 10, 15 ads for them. So something like this, Dan. Yeah. Why is th why is this color? And I, there's more detail here. So are you are, are they asking for something? Yeah. Well, they're asking for more detail because first of all, it's much shorter, and they have to use this as a tool to get sign-offs from people at the company. So you want to be as clear as possible with mm -hmm. how it will look. So other than the script, you're kind of like the next <coughs> step in showing showing off <coughs> what they want to be. Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for leverage, and of course it's a, a train scene where they're trying to, trying to outrace the train so they can get around it, I think. It's so funny to see this, because I, I remember that episode. Oh yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think I do. I remember yeah. I'm chasing a train, I so. Think it's, I think it's the first <laughs> episode I did, actually. It was uh, season three, episode 15. And uh, it's super cool to see this was the scene from Paranoid Park that required so much work. So, you know, the, the kids are on the train and the guy's trying to get them to stop and the one kid hits him with the skateboard and the guy trips and falls back. And uh, uh, the next scene falls into the train. He falls over the tracks into the trains, the oncoming train on the other side. Uh, and this went through all kinds of different, um, like that he got caught on the train, and all kinds of different versions of it happened. This was for a documentary on um, the roller skaters of the, gosh, what, you know, roller derby. This was for a pitch um, for a movie called The Five that Tony Cox was interested in. And so he dealt with these uh, kids that were all like, I guess, superhuman who could all skateboard. So it's funny too because I spent more time on this and than just about anything. So you said this was something for Tony Hawk. This, yeah, this it, was it was for Tony Hawk. So it's it's cool because you get to work with a lot of interesting people. I worked with Frank Oz and. Uh, you know, Gus Van Sant and I uh, don't know who else was it. Just lots of interesting people. So, has storyboarding boarding been around since it's the, been be around since since the beginning the of the movies? Yeah, it's been around yeah. since. Um, you could probably say that it went back to Milius back in the turn of the century because mm -hmm. he probably did little drawings to show how he was going to do his animations. Um, but Disney really established it, yeah. and then uh, it became more of a fundamental thing probably around the time of the Gone with the Wind, because mm -hmm. that that art director was doing a very exacting scene drawings, and then uh, he was the first production designer as well. So there was there was um, you know it was really developed at that time period at mm -hmm. that point, the late mid to late thirties. The one thing, though, is oftentimes the storyboard artists would not get credit well up in, into the 70s because um, there was this fear, I think, by directors that they might not have as much credit for yeah. their work yeah. as um, they might. Mm -hmm. I think That's editors the were in the same boat, weren't they, Tom? Mm -hmm. And editors not get a lot of credit? And I think it was that they were they came later in their in their credits. Well, I think <coughs> editors got credit earlier than that. But back in the teens and the thirties, sure. oftentimes a lot of the editors were women, mm -hmm. and they didn't get any credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it was because um, the uh, it just the mechanical skill of cutting and this was something like factory work almost, yeah. even though it's really the creative form that makes film film. Mm -hmm. You know, without editing it's it'll probably be boring. Yeah. Yeah. So it might be it. Any other questions for Dan? So uh, and this the tools I use are pretty simple. Paper, uh, pencils and markers. Hmm. And I'll use a computer and a scanner. Um, even 
recently, this last week, I was working for somebody in Greece and didn't have a scanner, so I used my phone to take a picture of it and send it to Greece. A minute later, he has it. So um, the technology is is a good thing for the most part. I, although I don't really use it to draw with. I have a Cintiq, but I don't use it that way. So. so you've been doing this for 20 some years. How many years before it finally was able to be, you know, enough of a career that it could pay the bills and rent and everything? Well, I started really doing storyboards in 89. Um, and I was doing, still doing comics then, so I was doing comics and animation. The comics paid, really paid the bills up until, I don't know, 95. And so, um, and that was a transition that I made into film from comics, because comics had sort of had a, a crash in the mid 90s, um, where a lot of comics companies had financial problems. So, again, that was a good thing, because it forced me to go in a different direction. So if somebody wants to become a storyboard artist today, how do they how do they break in? <clears throat> well, kind of what you guys are doing right now is is to take and and work on short films, work on local films, uh, get involved as a maybe as a PA or or an assistant to somebody who's working in the art department, and eventually you start to develop all these a knowledge of the set and how the different parts work. Um, the other part is going taking art classes and learning how to draw as well as possible and, and learning how to draw quickly. Um, uh, and then developing a knowledge of film just by watching film and taking notes. Uh, oftentimes I would do little thumbnails of, of a film throughout the whole film, just you know, just to get a, an, an idea, a sense of how it was edited and how the kind of compositions go together. That was really good. You know, drawing the compositions on, on the screen is, is great. And, and watching how they're used, how the, the camera's used with uh, dollies and cranes. And, you know, like, for instance, shots like um, Once Upon a Time in the West. Famous shot, they're approaching a little town, the crane goes over the town, and then you see all this activity. So it's a reveal. You're saying, here's the town, we don't know what's behind there. And then you go up. It's a dynamic shot because you're moving forward and you're moving up. So people tend to, it sort of blurs the line of the, the, uh, the movement itself. The fact that it's a, it's a mechanical thing that's not real is, is disguised a bit by having more than one movement at a time. Um, so it's all about magic, right? making things look real. Um, Good. Citizen came must have been storyboarded. Yeah, it was definitely storyboarded. Yeah. It was completely storyboarded. In fact, I think it was kind of unusual to do as much storyboarding on films at that point as he did. Just angles and shots. One of the, the things about um, Orson Welles is that he didn't know the rules that you can't break. So he didn't, he just did whatever he wanted and um, ended up really creating probably one of the greatest films ever made. Um, and having a hard time ever since then, you know? Yeah. Because he made such a great film um, right out of the, the gate. What year was it? What was it? 30? 30s. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of the exact. Uh, well, they, what did they just 30? do? The 75th. Um, 34? That's my guess. Okay. And Google. Someone will Google. Who's got the Google? Uh, great directors to look at. I mean, I always look at Kubrick because, yes. you know, you can't really talk about Kubrick and other people in the same room. You know, they're just, Kurosawa, yes, but not too many other people. Spielberg is great. He's one of the, really the greatest storytellers that we have, but he's not on the same level. Kubrick. He would even say that. I mean, he was his idol. So, um, and you can tell when you look at AI that it, it's a Kubrick film, but it's not quite a Kubrick film. You know, 
it's still a good film. I mean, everything Kubrick does is, or, or, that Spielberg does is on a completely different level. Um, and again, I would say Kurosawa, you should look at Kurosawa, you should look at um, Kobla, you know. 1941. Wow, way off. 1941, okay. Yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good film, too. People, hate, I don't know what it is, people hate the movie 1941 by Spielberg, mm. but watch the choreography and the, the compositions of every scene. It's completely, it's like this moving, it's like a, a roller coaster ride. Hmm. It's so much fun. So don't listen to any of the critics. <laughs> you know, Jurassic Park is a great film. I just saw it. Um, yeah, I just saw it in 3D. I don't know if the 3D made. A, was it epic? It was good. It was great. I mean, but it's still a great film. So you know, 3D well, is all going to make it a little bit better. I know like, things coming out of the screen. Yeah. It's got to be awesome. It was awesome. Have you done any like three D storyboard? Is that a little different? I don't think it's any different. No. I think you might separate layers. You might, you know, if if uh, it could be different in that you could sh basically do one drawing with a layer on top of it to that maybe is in a different color to show that they're gotcha. they're we're separating the two planes. So you have something else going in the background where you have something else moving in the foreground. In this case, right. It's coming Right, because it is directions for other people. So they need to know, you know, that the sword coming forward, this part is is it is in one plane and this is in another. Oops. Yeah. That's my bad. Sorry. That's okay. So were you guys into film um, before you started before you transitioned from Yeah, I was always into film. You were always into film? Always into film. Even from a little kid, you know, because a lot of the stuff I watched uh, again. For some reason, I watched a lot of British shows when I was a kid. Lots of uh, Jerry Anderson puppet shows. I was into puppets and all like that Black stuff. Adder. What's that? Black Adder. Black Adder. Yeah, they're all great. I mean, um, so yeah, from my early ages, all it was into like film and TV. Did you? Did you? Um, I mean, I assume probably you know some other storyboarders that like yourself. Are they uh, usually coming from a comic book background? Um, yes and no. You know, a lot of people I know that are in the storyboarding field wanted to get into comics. And so, and I don't know, and I'm the opposite. I started in comics wanting to get into film. So, um, you know, even like one of my uh, friends uh, who does huge films, he would rather work for Marvel, I think. He has big stacks of comics everywhere. <laughs> Brand new. I mean, he's he's got you know he works on these big films, and I go to his house and they're just all these <laughs> comics. They don't even have boxes. They're just all over. So you know that that's a big inspiration. Yeah. For you, how is drawing comics different from drawing storyboards? That's a good question because it's it's one that is hard to define. One of the things is that when you do storyboards, it's for planning out real physical. Things like a person's going to be there. It's going to moving moving through space. The camera is going to be doing something. With comics, it's not. It's it's the end result. First of all, you're you're drawing something to show that. It can be abstract too. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to follow some of the same rules that film does. You know, crossing the line and all that. Um, it, uh, like if you looked at. Um, Although it's influenced now by film a lot, you know, you tend to move around a page in a, a particular order. Uh, whereas, so the the actual form is different. Like a graphic novel. Yeah, you're limited to, to the space you're in, and you use uh, what's in each panel to to direct you to the next one. Whereas in film, you can cut between different shots. It's just that. Um, from shot to shot, you need to um, not cross the 180 degree line, which is the camera's here, the line is here. Don't cross the line uh, where you, you'll you have a, a sort of a distorted reverse shot of somebody. And it will, it'll, it's jarring in film. I suppose you could do it in, um, in comics. <laughs> 